forget about yourself. Concentrate on him. If not, then we go to Psalms 119. And uh, the last verse we discussed was what, verse 110? No, no, we discussed 109. We didn't get to 110. Okay? All right, so we begin with verse number 110. Verse number 110. Let's read together, please. Wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I dare not from thy precepts. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I dare not from your, from your precept. Okay. David was convinced that that grace that had kept him and brought him this far would not fail to lead him the rest of the way. He, he is convinced they have laid a snare for me. It's been very trying. It's been difficult. But though they laid a snare for me, and though they were vicious, and they pull up all stops to, 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 to derail me, to destroy me. Yet I held on to that which I knew was safe and secure. If there were any way that I was going to make it, it was going to be through your precepts, by keeping your precepts, by observing and keeping your commandments. He's convinced of that. How convinced are you regarding the word of God in your life, in your family life, and in dealing with life's situation? 
how, how, how uh, 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 solidified are you? Are you stationary? Or you actually can say like David, many things have happened. Some, some, some of those things, that negative things that happened to me were brought on by others. Some of those things I put myself in by my own choice. But regardless of whether it's me or others, regardless of what the cause of my negative predicament is, one thing I know, that the word of God is going to deal with me. The word of God is going to bring me to a better, a better place. Not a place, not, not necessarily a place in heaven, but a better place in this life. In terms of what I see, what I think, how I feel, and uh, what I do, the choices I make. Okay? Okay, so, 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 so. Uh, David was convinced that the grace that had kept him and brought him this far would not fail to lead him on. It's good for us to remember that he that begun a great work in him is the one that's going to finish it. It is characteristic of man to start something and not stop. No, I'm sorry. Characteristic of man to start something and not finish it. Characteristic of man to make promises and not keep them. But not God. Psalmist says, Known unto God, all of his ways are settled in heaven. They are settled, they are unchangeable. One of God's attributes is that he is unchanging. Peter said, James said, there is no uh, turning and variableness of him. And yet what he said is that the weather change and the the the, uh, the 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 heavenly bodies may change their course. He said, but with God, all of it is nay, nay, yea, yea. Uh -huh. And that's good. I pounded on that because this is what you need to come to grip with. This is what you need to settle in your own heart and in your own mind yeah. that you're going to I either deal with circumstances in your life, however negative they may be or bad they may be, you either going to deal with them in the finiteness of your own little mind or you're going to trust the one who said that I will direct your path if you lean not to your own understanding. Who, who's going to call a shot in your life? That's what it's all about. Who's going to call a shot in your life? You have to make that decision for yourself. Somebody is under the pole out there with the idea that if I get this one in here, then things gonna get gonna get better. And it may get better to a certain degree. But the Bible says it's better to put your trust in God than to put it in man. A man can make promises, but then there are hundreds of others around him that have to buy into what the front runner promised to do. If they don't buy into it, nothing will be, well, they fall short of what the promise is. Okay? All right, so let's look at verse number 111. But what you got out there is that David is convinced that great, the grace that kept him is the grace that keeps him. You have to be convinced again. That's what you want to get from here. You you want to be convinced that the God who promised to provide, take care, help you, who promised your grace sufficient for your need, you got to be convinced that He's going to make good yeah. on His promise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but remember, it doesn't look. It's not how it looks. Uh -huh. It's what He said. Flower grow, the grass wither, the flower wither, the, flower, the grass grow, but the what? Not I look, but the word of God. Okay, let's read 
verse 111. Let's read together. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, but they are the rejoicing of my heart. You see, again, David had drawn a conclusion. David had, had made a decision that I must go through life with an, a heritage. I must go through life something that I can hold on to and look forward to producing for me and in me a greater life, a better life. Yes. And so David says, what's going to be my heritage? Your testimonies. Mm -hmm. Your word. What you have said about yourself yes. going to be my testimony. And I want y'all to get that. Yes. What God has said about himself should be our heritage. What he has said to us should be our heritage. Heritage is something you, 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 you have by virtue of birthright or whatever. And so that is because of what Jesus did. Yes, yes. You have entered into an inheritance. As Peter said, that faded not away. Now Peter was thinking about uh, the Old Testament. When Israel went into the land. And that went into the land, the land being uh, flowing with milk and honey, that was for a while, but then finally the land began to what? Wither. Because of that sin and whatever. It was no, no longer an oasis as it was when they first went in. And he saw a good land. He saw a right land. He saw a productive, productive land. He saw that land wither. Peter said, we're going to a land. We're going to inherit the land. The land that God gave Israel uh, 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 decreased in terms of its effectiveness and in terms of its production. But, but the Christian have a land that God has given them, an heritage, an inheritance that God has given us. Peter said, that's faded not only. And so then, it's the word of God to, to this son is, is heritage. And he said, for how long? Forever. I made it my heritage. Forever. Not just when the sun shines and not just during the summertime. But forever. When the rain is falling. When the clouds are gathering. The winds are blowing. Flood waters overtaken, healed me. He said, I'm going to hold on to, uh, to the word of God. Listen, listen to me. What you see, you watch this now. Thy testimony have I taken as inheritance. What you see here is a commitment to stick to the word of God and to live and die by it. David said, I'm going to. Commit myself to this word, to your testimony, and I'm going to live and I'm going to die. I won't vacillate. I won't have lizard religion that when I'm at brown, I turn brown. When the young is green, I turn green. He said, my religion is going to be constant. One way. It's going to be characterized by trust and faith in God. No matter what my outward circumstances may be. No matter who accept me, who reject me. No matter who care for me, who love me, who hate me, who dislike me, who, whose view about me is favorable, whose view is unfavorable. That does not matter. I won't be motivated by that. I'm not controlled or influenced by other folks' opinion. Matter of fact, I don't need them to validate my existence. He said, I look to the word of God, and the word of God is going to tell me who I am. The word of God is going to tell me where I am. And the word of God is going to tell me where I can be. Because the word of God describes to me God. It describes heaven. It describes a blessed life. It, 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 it describes God's remedy for my ill, my sins, and for the sins of the world. That's why we will never have the utopia or the peace 
our country, our world will never get better until we learn to stand on what God said. Yes. Yes. And it seems like we're running out of time. Y'all saw it on the news that a six-year-old boy and a 12-year-old running around with a pistol. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Did you see uh, uh, the, 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 the day, I think it was, road rage again, and a little four-year-old girl and a shot shooting the car, four-year-old child was killed? Yeah. They said most of your violent acts are committed, 66% uh, uh, of your violent acts are committed uh, in uh, doing Bouts of road rage. Mm -hmm. It's going to take you about 10 minutes to get in your house tonight when you get home. Because you have so many locks on your door. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't find a key. Mm -hmm. the time in which we live. It is it's a commitment to stick to the word of God and to live and to die by it. I have decided that I'm going to live my life by the word of God, according to the word. I've decided a long time ago, even before I started pastoring, that if I, if I did pastor, I'm a pastor according to the word of God. Never to seek to please group, please individual, but I come straight down the middle with the word of God. I didn't buy into a group. I didn't buy into a group of deacons or a group of trustees or anything like that. I always presented myself and my case before the people, you the people, because if I knew something needed to be done and could be done, that may be a group that did not comprehend it at that time so that I would bring my cause to the people I do it even now. And so you decide whether you will go with Pastor Gain we could be, thank God for the progress we're making, but we could be much further ahead if more of us would buy into the word of God. If more of us would pray daily concerning the plight of the Christian church and especially the plight of the fellowship that we're part of. If you were to give yourself for one hour, just one, starting one hour a day to pray, Pray for the progress of the church. Pray for the, the development of the church. Pray that God would move in your particular ministry. Amen. Pray that God would touch heart. Pray the prayer Jesus told us to pray that God would give labor or send laborers into the vineyard. Yes. 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 If my people are called by my name, you, if we were to give ourselves to that, we'll see a, a mighty, mighty move of God. Yes. We see a move of God now. Yes. Yes. We don't pray but live it. But if we, know what, if we would do what he said to us, not only corporately but individually, if you just take God at his word, stop getting him, catching fit and, 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 and uh, retaliating and, and reacting to what people do and just keep the matter in God's hand, trust God to validate, trust God to, to, to bless you according to your faith in him and your obedience to him. If you were to do that. Stop worrying about how you're looking. Somebody messing over here. And then somebody, if you, if you just want to walk like this song has, and make thy testimony, have I taken out the hell? I'm going to live, I'm going to die, I'm going to stand, I'm going to fall on the word of God. My Lord. One of the things that I move on, that the best thing, one of the best things that ever happened to me, when I learned that, when I learned that, Whenever I would re retaliate or whatever I would react to what people say or did, I cut my blessings. Yeah. No. When I learned, I learned how to live, leave everything. I learned how to bleed pastor into God. I pray, Lord, guide and direct me and give me the message you have for your people. Uh, 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 lead me to lead your people. And I deliberately pray that. But then after I say that, I say, well, better, Lord. You give them the message through me. Rather than you help me to give the message to them, you give them the message through me. Rather than you helping me to lead them, you lead them through me. So when I learn how to take everything and put it in God's lap, you 
talk about enjoying his life. Mm. And, and I said that for your benefit, your benefit. I've been there a long time ago. I said for your benefit, you really want to live? Yeah. You really want joy in your heart? Just put everything, your total life, your family, everything in God's hand, and let God guide and direct you and resist the temptation to, to, uh, to act out of the flesh. Because sometimes, you know, we won't tell the folk, you know, we won't tell somebody else. <laughs> really get them straight and get sick and tired and all of that. But if you learn how to wait on God and let him handle everything about you, you see how God will lift you up. And you see the joy that will come in your heart. I'm saying this. I think I'm helping somebody with this. Be, be cool as a cute cup. And obedience. So then, darling, when 
you learn to hold your peace and, 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 and learn to uh, focus on God and what he said about who you are, what you have, then you obey him and trust him and you don't have to create, you just enter. Amen. You enter into the peace of the Lord. The joy of the Lord becomes your strength. Christ died on the cross and as a result of him dying, he made peace with God for us. That's right. That's right. Christ dying on the cross made peace with God for us. Mm -hmm. You obeying and trusting enable you to have the peace of God. Mm -hmm. See, when, when Christ, Christ made peace with God, we don't have to live perfect and sinless and all of that. Christ, by his death, he made peace for us with God. Mm -hmm. But now you need the peace of God. And the peace of God comes to your heart when you learn how to trust Him and when you learn how to obey Him. When you sell out and seek not your own, but seek the things of God. You stop going trying to lift yourself up. Well, I'm this and we're getting angry because folks don't recognize you to be who you claim to be. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. If I got the Grab somebody and choke them and make them say, I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor. Chances are I'm not a preacher or a pastor. But if I obey him, he'll function through me. And so their life going to be blessed. Because it is, it is, it is God's grace. when we can't have the peace of God. Neither can we have the glory of God. Why? Because God says, I will, I will give my glory to no one. Mm -hmm. And any time when it's about you, God cannot, uh, 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 he, he, he cannot bless that because he can only bless what he has already sent you. Mm -hmm. and, he has, and, and he has not sanctioned you to be king of the bingo game. And so he can't allow you, and he can't allow me, to gain this, this, this image and to gain this reputation and gain this honor on my own accord. He can't do that because this is the glory that belongs to him. Here it is. God is not against you getting glory. He is not against you getting the honor. He just don't want you to get the glory and honor that do him. If a, if a man or woman doing a good job, you tell them. You're blessing me. Tell them. That's the, the Bible said, give honor to whom honor is due. But when we get to the point where we are seeking the praise that belongs to God mm -hmm. and the honor that belongs to God, then God said, no, I can't do that because of the fact that I share my glory with no one. Right. And so then, yes, just the Barbara, that time himself, the reason why well-meaning people cannot be productive in many cases is because the motive is wrong. The motive is wrong. Okay. So how do I get that way? Glad you asked. God is the only one who can fix your heart like that. We all are basically selfish. All of us, every one of us in here, we are basically, and I got to get to the rest of that, 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 that's going to bring this out. We all are basically selfish, and we need God to give us grace, and we need God to empty us out of our selfishness so that we can be filled with him. We, we need God to help take away from us that selfish life that he might give us that selfless life. Okay? All right, so let's, let's, let's move on. So uh, look what he said here. Let's go back to that verse. Thy testimony is your testimony. What is the testimony? It's the truth, the promises of his word. The good things contained in God's word are the best thing. You want the best thing for you? 
for yourself. You want the best thing for your child. You want the best thing for your family. Well, the best thing are found in God's word. The best things are found in a relationship with God. The best thing you can do for yourself and do for your family, for your children, your grandchildren, whoever it is, the best thing you can do for them is teach them how to walk faithfully before God. That's the best thing you can do for them. Amen. Somebody thinks the best thing you can do is bring, bring them to the mall and buy this and buy that for them. No, the best thing you can do for yourself, the best thing you can do for your child, the best thing you can do for your fellow man is to bring them into a clearer, deeper, better knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give them that. Now testimony. Nothing else. Your word. Notice. Thou testimony have I taken as an heritage for how long? Forever. Like this, I say, that testimony have I taken as an heritage forever. Here now we see he anticipating eternal blessings. Forever. Eternal blessing. Not just for the day, not just for this a period of time, but forever. In other words, whatever is lacking in my life in terms of joy, con contentment, peace, I will get it on the other side. Uh, I will get it when this earthly existence has run its course. So he doesn't expect to get it all on this side. He will not cash in all of his checks on this side. Because he knew. Like the old sister used to say, Sister Robert, I got a check on Salvation Bank. And I'm going to cash it in one day. And so what, what he is saying is that your testimony not only has earthly value and values of time, your testimony, if I keep them, will bring me into eternal, heavenly, spiritual, everlasting blessings. Yes, Do y'all get that? Yes, yes. Look what he said. They are, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. What is it that caused your heart to rejoice? What is it that you rejoice in? I'm glad you didn't ask. <laughs> but the question is, what is it that caused your heart to rejoice? When you have your way? When folks telling you how good you are? And when they tell you that there's nobody like you lying to you? <laughs> what is it that, that you rejoice in? What is it that gives you the greatest joy, the greatest contentment, the greatest level of happiness? What is it? Shopping mall? What is it? I'm just asking. I'm just trying to get you to think. What is it? Again, when folks telling you what you want to hear, he says, your testimony the other thing that rejoices my heart more than anything else. He expected eternal values in and from God's testimony. The other rejoicing of my heart. He enjoyed a present satisfaction in them, but he looked forward to greater satisfaction. You got it? You see, we must see, listen, and when he said, my heritage, that's his portion in life. And listen, we must see our portion, we must see our heritage in the promise of God and not in the prosperity of this world. We must see our portion in the promise of God and not in the portion of this world. This world fleeing away. Fleeing away. And you might be on stage today, but after a while, somebody else is going to take your place. Mm -hmm. And put on their performance. And their performance may be better than yours. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't make this world and the thing of this world your portion. 
make the promise of God your portion. Okay? Verse 112. Let's read together. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. She basically said this, the same thing. I made my decision, and my decision was not only made for time, my decision was made for eternity. I have inclined my heart, not just my ear to hear, not just my tongue to speak of, but my heart to live by. You can hear good things, and you can repeat the same, and yet not incorporate it into your life. The psalmist encourages us, he said, hear God's testimony. Hear his testimony. Speak about his testimony. But most of all, live his testimony. Let it be the ruling factor in your life. Let the word of God, uh, what the, the, the word is, superintend your life. The word of God is to be, uh, Paul talked about in, in, in Galatians, in uh, Ephesians, it means let the word of, when he says let the word of God rule, it means arbiter. Let the word of God be the arbitrator. So when the flesh is trying to go this way, other folk kind of put you that way, he said let the word of God be the arbitrator and let the word of God be the mediator. Lay not to your own understanding. In all your ways, be governed by the word of the Lord. I'm preaching, I'm teaching to y'all. And this stuff here is for you to live by, not just the, what, the, what, listen, the ultimate aim and goal of Christ working in his church is not for information, it's for transformation. The word of God is not given simply to inform you not given you to make a few adjustments in your life, a behavioral modification, change a few things. The Word of God is designed to transform. Well, transform, you get the word uh, metamorphosis, like the, the butterfly, I mean the, 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 the caterpillar. Matter go through metamorphosis. It's a little slimy looking something. But in the end, it's a beautiful butterfly. The Word of God is is meant to transform your life. And, and how do it begin? The transformation of life began with the transformation of thought. Mind. Um, um, uh, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So you learn how to think like Christ. Uh, 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 present your body a living sacrifice. 12th chapter of Romans. Uh, Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, sacrifice, and be not Conform, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word of God, you can sit here, you can come to Bible class eight days a week. You can come to Bible class and stay in Bible class 25 hours a day. If it doesn't affect your life and it doesn't change, you, it's just like you're not being here. Value, the benefits are in the doing, not simply the hearing or the speaking, but the doing it. Got it? Okay. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. Here it is. David resolved to govern himself by God's testimony. I'm going to govern myself. I'm not going to be governed by man or the latest uh, 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 ideology. A, a, a related theory of some philosophical uh, findings. I'm not going to be governed by, I'm going to be governed by God's testimony. Listen, to have the blessings of God's testimony, we must come under the bound of the discipline of those testimonies. Do you hear me? In order to get the benefit of these testimonies, See, in the testimonies of God, there are benefits. 
in the testimonies of God, thou did it. God said, if you do this, I'll open the windows of heaven. If you do this, I'll heal your land. If you do this, I'll fight your battle. If you do this, I'll direct your path. So in his testimonies, we find a blessing. But in order to get the blessing of the testimony, you must also yield yourself, surrender yourself to the discipline of the testimony. So what the, the testimony is that I open the window of heaven, but what's the discipline? Pay your tithe, bring the tithe and offering to the storehouse of the Lord. The testimony is that I heal your land, but what's the discipline? If my people call by my name, shall humble themselves, seek my face. The, 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 the blessings is involved in opening the door, but the discipline that you have to knock. The blessing is, is found in the riches that there, that, 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 that there are for those who discipline seek. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to give you, I want to over, I want to shower you with blessing, but the discipline is So we want God to open the windows, but we don't pay tithes and offerings. We want God to heal our land, but we don't turn from our evil and wicked ways. We want God to open doors, but we don't knock. We want God to answer our prayer and give us guidance and direct us and lead us, but we don't want to heal. And we yield to our own understanding. To get the blessings of the testimony, you have to yield to the discipline of the testimony. Anybody here don't understand, really? I, I, because I want you to get that. Your, 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 your blessing, your breakthrough is dependent upon that. Yes, 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 yes. You're serious. You're sincere. You, you love God with your heart. You really want to do it. You want to come out of this, don't you? Yes. But, 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 but that's a discipline yes. that you must yes. initiate yes. for the things to come. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so that my heart goes out for, for, the, for, the, for the Christian church because so many miss it. Mean well, but miss it. Now, if you don't understand it, just say, well, I need a little more light on that. I'll do the best I can because you got to get this. You got to get it. The blessings of the testimony is dependent on you keeping the discipline of the testimony. I'll fight your battle. That's a blessing. You don't have to fight. Yeah. The discipline is hold your peace. Yeah. You want to be blessed. All of us want to be blessed in a special way. The discipline is blessed is the man who walk not so you can't walk. And you can't stand in the wilderness. And the discipline is not to sit in the seat of the skull. Yeah. If you do that, it's yeah. You won't be blessed. See, see, see Matthew 121. His name shall be called Jesus, and they shall, he shall save his people from their sin. Our problem is that we want to be saved in our sin. The problem here is, and I'm going to be out of here. The problem here is that we want information. We want the truth of Christ to shape, Brother Sims, our theology, but not to shape, shape our sociology. That is our way of living. We want the truth. Oh, Rev, is this right now? Look, Rev, I want to make sure this. And then I, I, I study, I buy books. Because you want the, the Bible to shape your theology. Theology study, proper study of God. Mm -hmm. But we don't want the Bible to shape our sociality, our lives. We don't want to change a lot. Got it? Okay. All right. We're getting there. Hold on. Hold on. Listen. Comfort comes by way of duty. We must be constant in performing our duty to God and man. And herein is the proof of true religion. How do you know you got true religion? You know it by the way, well, how do you know whether you got true religion or false religion? You know it by the way you treat God and the way you treat your fellow man. 
Your fellow man get on your nerves. You can't forgive. You got to go. You don't have the true religion of Jesus Christ. True religion is giving God his due, but also giving man his due. That's true religion. Y'all got it? Mm -hmm. Giving both to God and to man that what? That due. Okay. And so then, when we look at when we look at this, comforts come by way of duty. We must be constantly performing our duty to God. And man is the proof of true religion. You know, let me deviate a little bit, living, just living, I'm coming back, okay? I'm not going to deviate too far. But I got to tell you this. You know what the problem, one of the problems and the challenges that, that the church, and, and the thing that keeping the church's performance so far? Brother Beast, you know what it is? We have come to a point where we fall into the same rut that England fell into during Charles Spurgeon's day. And there are few of us left who are sounding a note. Folks are saying when they come, give me that showtime religion. <laughs> and they don't want the whole time. And that's what you give me that showtime religion. Preachers are turning to marketing to build, build that church to raise members. But we change our, uh, give me showtime religion. The thing about showtime religion is that every Sunday when you come, the show got to be a little better than the last Sunday show. I don't do show, showtime religion because after I put on my show, my, my, my thing, put on my showtime religion, nephew, then what's going to happen? is that they're going to look at me and look at me, then they're going to find somebody over there who can put on a better show. Mm. I'll lose all my memory. <laughs> no, that, that, but the point, you, you see what I'm trying to say. Don't become your own, your biggest competitor. When you try to outdo yourself the very next time. Okay, let's look at verse number uh, 113. Let's read together. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law I love. Do I love? I hate vain thoughts. I hate vain thoughts. Why? Because they lead to nowhere. They're not lasting. At best, they give you a temporary satisfaction. He said, I hate vain thoughts because vain thoughts promise you one thing, but they give you something else. You know what he said? I hate vain people. Vain thought, unstable person. The Bible tells a double-minded man. It's unstable in all his ways. Vain thought, why? Divert the mind from that which is good and open the door to all kinds of evil. When a person has vain thoughts, vain thoughts, I can get happiness. I can find meaning in life. Outside of God. Vain thought. And so when that happens, it, 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 it seals the door against him and only him, uh, him who, who, who's the only one that can give joy and contentment. And it opens the door to all kinds of evil. Because if I exclude God, if I conclude that, it's, it, uh, that I can find fulfillment, satisfaction, and completeness, in anything other than God, if I conclude that, then I shut God out, who is the source of all joy, peace, power, and strength, and I open the door to endless searches. I turn to booze, I turn to this, I turn to sex, uncontrollable this, and it opens the door for all kinds of evil. Because the search for contentment goes and leads in many directions. In other words, you know why it's easier to do wrong than to do right? It's easier to do wrong than to do right because there's only one way you can do right. And there are a million ways you can do wrong. And this is what you say. I hate van thought. I hate van thought because van thought cuts me off from the only source. It cut me off from my source. 
in another word, look at as a mistake of the intellect there. But the point of emphasis is that without God, there is nothing lasting that is worthwhile. Right? Okay, talk back to me. Tell me something. Ask something. Say something. Then God. But look at this. But thou law, I love, I reject vain thoughts, and I accept your law. I consider vain thought to be useless, but your law is purposeful, meaningful, and productive. David, what did? But what did? But thy law do I love. Let somebody say love. love. No. But thy love do I love. Now I want you to see what David's saying here. But thy law, I hate vain talk. I don't engage in them. But thy law, do I love? Do I love? Do you follow what David is saying here? David is saying to us that he delights in the rule of duty. Your law is what I love. And your law says, praise him, worship him. Your law says, Bring the tithe. Mm -hmm. Your law says, do unto others as you have them to do unto you. Your law says, forgive mm -hmm. those who have wronged you. Mm -hmm. The law says mm -hmm. that you ought to walk circumspectly in the world in order that you might win the goal of men. The law says, mm -hmm. lay not up treasures for yourself on earth. Mm -hmm but lay up treasures in heaven. Yes. Mm -hmm. The law says, mm -hmm. if you want to be part of my company, deny yourself, take up the cross, follow me. In other words, the law calls us to do this. Mm -hmm. Treat your fellow man like you want him to treat you. And so when David said, I love your law, he is saying, I love to do this. Yes. Yes. That my relationship has placed upon me. Far from seeing religion as a burden, he saw it as a joy because it enabled him to render to God the glory to his name. <laughs> oh, I wish I had more who said, thank you man, for the law. Thank you for the duty that I have. Thank you for the obligation. Thank you for the service I can render. Thank you, Rabbi. I heard you say the other day that uh, we got enough folks in here to start a tutorial program. Thank you. I'm glad that I can respond to do this. Yeah. Not only that, you also mentioned that you can start a nursery that will help parents and, and help one another. Thank you, Rabbi, for the duty that you have made known to my heart. I will enter into this duty. I'm tired of sitting and not making my contribution to the fellowship. I want to make it. Then I've been making my contribution to the fellowship, but I want to make a greater contribution. I can find just a little more time. Yes. <laughs> Preach for it, man. Preach. Am I helping you? Yes, sir. Am I helping you? Yes, sir. If I was a preacher, I would say thank you for reminding me of duty. Not just the preacher. Yeah, or inspiration sermon, but the duty to go into the highway and the byways and tell folk, you see sinners every day. Thank you, God. David said, I love the Lord. Ever before me is a responsibility. Ever, be, ever before me is an opportunity to help somebody, to encourage somebody, to throw my arms around somebody, to get involved in somebody's hurt and pain. Some child needs direction. There's so much out there to be done. Yes, mm. And when we confine ourselves to our performance, Brother Fields, here, just in this place, then it simply means we have missed the whole boat about what this thing is all about. Yes, yes. The only time I preach is when I come here. Mm. That's a half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe a teaching. Let's say three hours a day. Tell me that's what God called me for? No. To, to, to teach and to preach three hours a day out of 168? Mm. Evidently, he meant something else. Yeah. 
I ought to be telling the story where I am. Do y'all hear me? Yes, sir. That's what I'm looking at. That's what I look at. That's what touched me. That's what this pastor is all about. That's what moved me. Not what go on in here, but what moved me is all the God people living the life of victory on the outside and helping and participating in the upbuilding of God's kingdom on the outside. Hmm. I got to ask myself, of course, how many, how much time do I put in in the course of a week? How much time do I put in working for the Lord? <laughs> but that law, love David, delight in the rule of duty. The more, listen, the more we love the law of God, the more we shall get the mastery over van thought. In other words, David said, I hate van thought. But what you're going to do about it, David? I'm going to love the law of God. I'm going to get love as an action word. I'm going to get involved in doing that which God commanded me to do. And I'm going to become so busy in doing what God wants me to do that I'm going to have my time in my mind for being up. The way to... to, to, to the way to rid yourself, free yourself of being up, futile ideas, is to fill your thought with great ideas. Yes, Lord. If you want bad to get out of your life, fill your life with doing good. That's what Paul meant in the fifth, seventh, fourth chapter of Philippians when he said, Now, whatsoever things are fear, whatsoever things are love, whatsoever things are good before, he said, Think on these things. And if you think about the good stuff and make it a habit of thinking of good stuff, you don't have much time to think of evil stuff. And then the joy will come to your heart. As you think of these good things, you're going to get the benefit of this. Let me see what I got here. Oh, yeah, I can get this over to y'all. Listen, let's say to you again. The more we love the law of God, the more we are able to control vain thoughts. Not just sitting back. Lord, you know I got vain thoughts. You know. I want you to help me. Mm. Take these vain thoughts out of my mind. My and you pray the prayer for 10 minutes, 5 minutes. <coughs> and then you get up. When you get up, you put the television on. <coughs> and you're looking at Judge Judy. Or you're looking at this one, you're looking at that one. Not knowing, not realizing, it's constantly filling your mind right. with a certain way of thinking. Right. It's, it's, it's important to you. Somebody's feel a uh, uh, psychological persuasion. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you're thinking that then what, what happened? You know what happened? In, uh, in, 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 in the conversation, you find yourself quoting Dr. Oz more than you find quoting Peter. Mm -hmm. It's true. Because that's what you feel your mind. Your mind going to be filled with that which you spend most time in. That's why you talk to the average fellow. I so saw in many cases, they can tell you who played on the team. They can tell you where you graduated, what college you played on. They can tell you about this. Why? Because they fill a mind with this. Huh? Mm -hmm. In some cases, huh? Well, I've been trying for a long time. I've been looking, trying to find. What would you been looking for, son? Uh, I've been looking for, uh, trying to find this quote. I know it's somewhere in the book of Nicodemus. <laughs> 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 Would you fill your mind? <laughs> if you fill your mind with nothing, nothing will come out of your mouth. <laughs> verse one fourteen. Verse one fourteen. Let's read together. Look what he said. Thou art what? You are, you are my hiding place. And you are my what? I hope in thy word. David comforted himself in God's protection. You are my hiding place and my sheep right there. David saw God as his hiding place to protect him from danger. Mm -hmm. And he saw God as his shield to preserve, preserve him in danger. So David said, you're my hiding place. In other words, when danger comes, I hide in you. 
But then not only are you my hiding place to protect me from danger, sometimes in your wisdom and your knowledge and your purpose, you allow danger to come. But I don't have to worry about that. You didn't protect me from the danger, but you are my shield. You will protect me in the danger. You had to see God like that and not question and not become all bent out of shape and lose your faith when things go bad and go wrong. And you just pray that God would do this and Lord, you know what I'm going through and what I'm facing. And then things get worse instead of better. The devil will play with your mind and make you say, see that? You don't have religion. You see that? God, you can't come on God. You see that prayer doesn't work. No, but the point here, if he didn't protect you from the danger, he's going to protect you in the danger. You're going to come out with a testimony. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Oh, like what I'm doing, what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> look, we must look to God to protect our life, our life from death and our soul from sin. A lot of times we take in times the Lord, take them getting on this highway. And they want you to protect me. You guide me. Make sure I get to my destiny. Or my children are on the road. Make sure they get to that. And you should pray that. But that shouldn't be the full content of your prayer. Lord, protect my body, my life from death. But then protect my soul from sin. Because mm. I'm going to come across something. The temptation is going to be sharp and keen. Huh? It's all right when you're tempted with that that does not resonate with your nature. But what's going to happen when, when, when that thing that you are most vulnerable to? What's going to happen when that person or when that stuff that you are vulnerable to come against you? In other words, you don't, you'll never steal anything. You see money that you're going to bring it to a particular source and trying to find out who the, the owner. So then the temptation to steal is not going to affect you. But, but what about the thing that you move on with? Right. <coughs> spreading, spreading rumors and gossip. And you get a, 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 a piece of gospel that is juicy as a steak. <laughs> <laughs> and you got, a, you got your friend, you know, y'all talking. And you want to tell him. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ask God to protect your soul from sin. To keep you from falling. By faith we must trust our Heavenly Father to furnish us with necessary grace and mercy. Look what he said. I hope in thy word. Why? Because your word has acquainted me with you. Your word has assured me of your love, of your commitment to me. It is through your word I learn that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. By your word I learn that if I walk through the valley of shadows of death, I don't have to fear no evil because you're with me. By your word I learn if I don't retaliate, you'll prepare a table for me right in the present. It is through your word I learn that you love me, David Moses said. With an everlasting love, Jeremiah, with an everlasting love, Moses told me through your word that underneath me are your everlasting arms. Jeremiah said to me that uh, no matter what goes, go, come, come in my life, that you are faithful yes. and you are damned that I be here present on planet Earth before I became uh, uh, in incepted in my mother's womb. Yes. Before the, the concept of my being. Your word is through your word. I learned that in the New, New Testament said, through your word, I learned that Jesus' blood paid it all. Lord, to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stand, but your blood. It's through your word. I've learned that even if this disease Overtake me. I'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. It is through your word I learned that I should be steadfast and unmovable and always abound in the word of the Lord because my labor is not in vain. I learned that through your word. So I hope. I hope in thy word. Not simply because of what 
Pastor Gaines preached and taught, but I learned to hope in your word because of the experience that I've had with you and your word. You, 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 you have never let me down. I had my weeping in the night, but I trusted your word, and joy came to me in the morning. Not because of what others say, but because of what I've experienced of myself. I experienced that your grace is sufficient in all circumstances of life. My hope is in your word. I hope in thy word. Those who depend on God's promise shall have the benefit of his power. And be taken under his great protection. Though, like it, if you believe and trust God's word, if you believe and appoint yourself with God's word, you trust his promise, you're going to experience his promise, his power. The power is in his word. Yes, it is. I'm coming to a close. Let's look at verse 115. Depart from me, ye evildoers. I got something to say to y'all. <laughs> look what he said. Depart from me, ye evildoers. I made up my mind. I will keep the commandments of my God. Depart from me, evildoers. Don't, 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 don't even come here. <laughs> don't, don't even bring that to me. This is what he said. Don't even try to entice me. Depart from me. Listen. What you see here is a firm and fixed resolution to live a holy life. We need to renew our resolution daily. Keep God's commandment before us. Like the psalmist, when you get up in the morning, you need to renew your resolution. Father, I will live for you today. Mm -hmm. I will glorify and magnify your name today. Father, I am yours. Use my hand. Use my feet. Use my tongue. Use my brain. To glorify your name. To do something positive. To help somebody. To live for fallen brother. Every, every day, make your resolution. Yeah. Does it mean that you're going to have sinners? No. But it means that your heart's going to be fixed. Your mind going to be made up. Mm -hmm. You're going to be committed mm -hmm. to a life of service for God. You're going to wake up and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad. Because God is going to use me this day mm -hmm. to magnify his name. He's going to use me this day to bring somebody out of darkness into the light. God is going to use me this day to bring some comfort to a person who is disturbed. And there is a mother, there is a father who is down because of the waywardness of a child. God is going to use me to bring hope to that parent. Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, bless the Lord. Thank you, God. We need it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> in, in, in the verse you just mentioned or read about the importance Looking and listening whether you want to or not at the social media that's going on with our world situation and election and so forth and those who are running for different uh, positions and they are Christians of so-called Christians of whatever denomination, if, if we who take are taking a stand and doing what the word says, should the media talk against each other and our youth who we are as the next generation, should we explain to them 
what they see of how would you address to the younger group <laughs> when they hear the backstabbing and the mm -hmm. different things that are happening. When well, you see. And they see what we as adults. The deception. Yes. And all that take place. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, selfishness. Yes. Selfish and personal and agenda being propagated in that yeah. world. First of all, we got to understand that this, this, what they're doing, is a part of the world system. That's, I mean, this world system is antithetical to God's system, and so the world doing. See, the, the problem, the problem is, the world is doing what it's supposed to do. It's the problem is the Christ is not doing what this. That's, so that's why Christ gave up the solution, not to. But politics, not to a government, Christ gives the solution to the church. And the church is not applying to the world. He told us the church would be the salt of the earth. Salt will add flavor to life, to, to state. We don't, and we're supposed to add flavor to society. But we don't eat. We, we buy into what the, what the world does. And we, our churches, in many cases, are run according to the philosophy of the world. So that's what the problem is. What should we do? We should teach and train our children in the way of God. And we should also understand that this world will never be a utopia. The kingdom of God will never come in, uh, in, in, in time. It will only come in eternity because Christ is the one that's going to bring in the kingdom. We can't do it. And we got to understand, they said this world going to grow according to Daniel Wiser and Wicca. So the world is going to get wicked because it is what you see in this country here. The more when we move away from God, mm. the worse things get in this country. I mean, look, look at this mess we got in this country. Why? Because we, our government is moving away from, from God. So then when you, when you leave God for your own way, you're going to experience the consequence of that. So... This is what we do. I think it was one time in the Treasury Department of the United States that when they were training people to handle money, they would never let them see counterfeit money. Well, how are we going to determine what money is real and what's counterfeit? They never would let them see counterfeit money. They would handle on a daily, regular basis real money, the real thing, because their, their philosophy was this. If they become familiar enough with the real stuff, they're going to easily recognize the counterfeit. And so then rather than try to work for the youth with them and try to, no, as we teach God in his way and his promise, yes. they're going to experience that. Yes. And there are going to be some changes. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. Much change is taking place in other countries. In China, 70,000 a day coming to China churches is led by 75% women. Mm. But many are sealing their testimony with their blood. And the point of emphasis is that God is working mightily and we just we, we, we miss the boat, and uh, we we try to we try to judge everybody according to the American United States standards. This is what we call relative culture uh, cult, culturalism, and uh, that every you know. But anyway, not to get into that. But uh, we got we got. Let me finish this with you. I promise you, I got you in a little while. Listen, we need to say, I will for the future. Look right this. Look at 5115. Depart from me, evil doer. I will keep the commandment of my God. Maybe you haven't done it, but you might want to consider it tonight. And uh, so, uh, uh, you might want to say, I haven't done it in the past. I, I, I've been lazadastical. I've been slack. But starting this night, this day, I will for the future walk closely with my God. Lord, turn my heart strongly to you and give me grace. You're going to make mistakes, sure. But if you commit your way to him, he will guide and direct you, and he will teach you through the mistakes, through your faults and the failures, because God deals with the heart. Mm -hmm. Listen, look, look, look at it. Depart from me, ye evildoers. What we see here is a farewell to bad company. It's a farewell to bad company. Now, this is where the song has got y'all. See, you like the courage to get out of your life, people and group that prove to be a hindrance to your spiritual walk. I don't want to hurt nobody feeling right. 
Well, you know, I tried. I put it between the lines. Some folks can't read between the lines. They can only read on the line. <laughs> well, I don't want to make them feel bad. By making them feel bad, by being honest, you ought to be, you ought to be honest. And they're being honest, cause them to feel bad, perhaps God will use that to open their eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see that one? This man made him, he said, depart from me. That's it, I don't want to hear it. Don't make that suggestion. I don't want to be a part of it. Don't bring that to me. Got it? Read verse 116, 17. Give me a minute and a half. Might be through. But I'm wondering because I think this is going to help you. Let's read. Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. 17. Hold thou me up, and I shall be saved, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Go back to 16. You follow me? He said, Uphold me according to thy word. Go back to 17. After he asked, Uphold me, he's now he said, Hold me up. I told you that there's parallelism in Hebrew writing. I said the same thing over the twice, but it says it's like a different. Listen, listen. We need divine grace. See, he asked him, uphold me, hold on me up. Uphold me, hold me up. We need divine grace to keep us from falling into sin. Uh, let me tell some of you Holy Ghost filled people. You tongue speakers. Let me tell you something. Okay? And you didn't sort of I'll jump over the moon and all that, and, and you saw yourself all white. And, okay, enough of that. But here I'm going to tell you something. You see, if God don't hold you, you'll go right back. Yes, sir. Some of that stuff you've been in. Yes, all some new stuff. Yes, Asking yourself, how in the world could I have done that? Yes, I never thought I could do that. That's the, this man had good sense. He said, you hold me up. Yes. I can't trust me. No, no. I can't trust you. You hold me up. We stand no longer than God holds us up, and we go no further than he carries us. Yeah. He said, do it according to your word. Yeah. He pleased the promise of God's word. God will not fail us. Our holy security is grounded on his divine support. We're only saved, and we hang in that way. Y'all got it? Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Yeah. God keep you. What does your heart just to speak? 
spirit control. Thank you. 